It's my pleasure to be supporting Equality California once again, and it is my honor to present this award to my friend Adam Lambert. Not only is Adam an incredible talent and an out and proud entertainer, but he's an outstanding and highly visible advocate for our community whose courage is an inspiration to young people to be bold and brave and to stand up against hatred. Adam and I first met uh, in the studio while working on this first album, and um, it's a rare opportunity to work with somebody with such an incredible range and talent. Um, tonight you've got just a small taste of what he can do, but this bitch can sing. <laughs> and it's, you know, it's really, really rare to work in the studio with a pop star and have your jaw, you know, drop to the ground. It's, um, so, apart from the fact that I love working with him, he's such a charming and lovely person to be around. And, um, but another thing that makes Adam particularly special is his bravery and his determination to be who he truly is, unapologetically. Yeah. It ain't easy. <laughs> um, shortly after his infamous uh, American Music Awards performance, yes, had him temporarily banned from the network. Yeah. Um, we spoke on the phone about the, the double standards that we as gay men face in this business. We're all aware of it, but this uh, overtly homophobic decision really highlighted it for us all to see and made it clear that the fight for equality is far from over. And that's why Equality California is so important. And that's why I'm so proud to present this Equality Idol Award to Mr. Adam Lambert. One sec, girl. Hold on. Please take a moment to enjoy a look at the life of tonight's on the If Adam Lambert were destined for anything, it was always stardom. As a child growing up in San Diego, Adam began his journey at the age of 10, when he was cast in his first role, Linus, in the Lyceum Theater production of You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown. Adam was hooked, and in the years that followed, he performed with his school choir, theater, and jazz band, took private voice lessons, and appeared in more musicals, including Hello Dolly, Chess, Camelot, The Music Man, Grease, and his Captain Hook in Peter Pan. After high school, Adam moved to L.A., and by 2004 was quickly becoming a sought-after performer, both in the U.S. and abroad. He was cast in European productions of Hair, and played the role of Joshua in the Ten Commandments, the musical, alongside Val Kilmer. He tried his hand as the frontman of a rock band, and was cast as an understudy for the role of Fiero in the national tour and L.A. productions of Wicked. But it was his 2009 emergence as a finalist on American that crushed him into the international spotlight and into the role of an admired LGBT leader and activist. So many of us, as kids, did not have any LGBT role models to look after. We did not see ourselves in movies, television, or even magazines. We never saw examples of LGBT people living out their dreams. Adam has transformed the perception of what is possible and has provided comfort and support with LGBT kids for his struggle. His impact will be felt for many generations to come. Our kids will be growing up not only hearing that it gets better, but seeing it as well. It gets better. It seems hard, you know. I think being different is always going to be a tough, tough climb, you know. There's always going to be people that are scared of it. But at the end of the day, if you give those bullies and those people that are, that are so ignorant and, and, and fearful of your lifestyle, if you give them the power to affect you, you're letting them win. And they don't deserve that. What you're doing by being who you are is you're keeping it real and you're being really brave. It's a pivotal time in the progress of equal rights, and I am very grateful to be the subject of such broad visibility. I strive to lead by example by making no apologies for or withholding my identity as a proud, comfortable, confident, and sometimes very accepted man. I strongly believe that all people have a fundamental right to 
love who they want to love, and if they so choose, have their union recognized by the laws of this country, regardless. Sam just said to me, it's so phallic. I think I tried to prepare everyone on that little cell phone message. I hope that was okay. Um, I, I, I just want to say uh, I auditioned for American Idol because I love singing and I love performing, and that's what my intention was. Uh, soon after American Idol, all of a sudden I was famous, and I was like, whoa. And uh, then came all the, oh, you're the gay guy that's famous, and. I, at first, I was really overwhelmed and intimidated by all of that, and I made some missteps maybe along the way, maybe said some stupid things or didn't say the right thing, but uh, over the past couple years since American Idol, I've uh, recognized my responsibility as a gay man in the public eye, and that's something that I'm really thankful for. As a, a teenager growing up, when I was struggling with my own identity, I didn't have anybody. I didn't have anybody to really look up to, except maybe like, <laughs> race, you know, that was what I watched at home. And to, to recognize the opportunity to be somebody that was comfortable being a fucking weird fag, hello. And, and, I, and I own that phrase, I am, I'm weird, I love it. I was that theater kid in high school that was like playing dress up, you know what I mean? And to have somebody be like that in the public eye and to be proud of so much for uh, recognizing me, I appreciate it. And um, I'm gonna keep being that weird fucking fag. <laughs> and having a really good time doing it. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please thanks once again our 2011 Quality Advocate Award.